Hello and welcome to another episode of GM Talks. Today we'll go into instructive mode. I'm going to show you a little Grandmaster secret that netted me a lot of wins uh, over the years. Uh, it's uh, from the Carlsbad structure, which you see here on the board. Um, and, and the Carlsbad structure usually arises from something like the Queen's Gambit declined or the Exchange Carrocan or maybe even the Grinfeld defense or the London. Um, and as you see, uh, white has uh, one more uh, pawn on e3 and black has one on c6. Uh, that also determines the, the plan for each side. Uh, the, uh, it doesn't matter what, what pieces are on yet, but this is was something we'll get into, which is very important. Anyway, white's plan is either uh, the minority attack, that is, uh, he will go uh, forward here, like here, here, and here, and then he will attack this guy. Um, and trying to settle black with a weakness on c6. This is, in general, uh, the idea. If, if black uh, goes uh, past with the pawn, then the d-pawn will become isolated. Uh, there are various ways for black to defend against the minority attack. This is something I will get to into in a later video, because the Carlsberg structure is super important. It's one of the things you simply have to master if you want to become a grandmaster, but uh, you cannot learn everything uh, all at once. So today we'll just learn one simple concept. It's about which pieces are good in these squares. Okay, this was one plan for white. Another plan for white is to go with the, the pawns here, and uh, create a strong center, because uh, the white actually has a, minority, a majority in the center. Uh, and if he do, does this in the middle game, he might be able to get a space advantage on the king side and in the center and uh, transform it into a king side attack. This is, uh, was a, a favorite plan of Garry Kasparov uh, and also the, the great patriarch uh, Bart Vinik from Soviet Union. So this is the white's two plans. He also, in the, in the uh, early days, uh, white also did some knight e5 and f4, and uh, which is known as the Pillsbury attack. But it's not so effective anymore. Sometimes it can be very strong, but in general, it's it's just seven white with a weak pawn on e3 when the knight is kicked back with f6 at some point, unless the knight can sacrifice itself. Okay, black also has plans. One of the, the things that characterize this position is, of course, that white has... Uh, the C file to attack um, and black also have something. He has the E file and that's the only open file close to the king side and usually sometimes white will castle queen side but in general both sides will castle king side and black might have a chance for a king side attack uh, uh, because he Due to the open file, he has some ch some more space there and more maneuvering space. And and uh, even with the, for instance with the bishop on d6, he is he's already maybe threatening on h2 and stuff like that. He might also uh, use his majority on the king side. Uh, some some plan that might work, especially in the endings, um, is to do something like this: an attack on e3. Uh, because e3 is sort of the base chain of uh, white's uh, pawns uh, structure. Um, it's a little bit like what white is trying to do on the queen side. Okay, this was m about the pawn structure. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is what happens with pieces on the board. Let just one thing to notice is, in general, the pawn structure is regarded as slightly better for white. And here we have another situation, here with knights on the board. And that actually changes everything. And most people don't know that. They still think that white is slightly better. But with just one knight on the board, black is almost always okay if the knight is on d6. Because from this, this is a super square for, for the knight. It covers this guy, it covers this square, covers this square, and covers this square. Especially the c4 square and the b5 square is uh, are important because uh, after an a6 by black, uh, he already have three three uh, three guys uh, defending b5, which makes the important minority attack very dif difficult. Also, if white goes something like b4, then this square becomes super juicy. 
and the knight will jump here, and where it will attack e3, that we already know might be an attacking point, but also uh, discourage any kind of attack along the c file. So a knight on d6 versus a, a, a white knight is almost always better for black, and most people don't know this, so let's see that in it as an example. I've used this many times. And um, here we are with Bobotsov versus P uh, Petrosian. We are in Lugano, 1968, before most of us was born. Um, and this is a classic game and something everybody should know. Uh, Petrosian uh, shows this very important strategic concept that you can use in your game. Okay. And we have a queen's gambit on the board. And here white takes on d5, the exchange variation of the queen's gambit decline. It's a harmless version uh, with, with an early knight f3, which allows black to get his white squared bishop outside. Usually the, the white squared bishop is a problem for black to develop that one, that guy. Um, but here it's, it's possible, which makes this um, not a very good chance for an advantage for white. Okay, but we are more interested in the middle game uh, strategic, so let's fast forward, not the openings. All very normal. And g6. And now black is ready for bishop f5, and I think in theory he has already equalized here. And as we know, notice the, it is very nice for black to exchange this square, uh, bishop, and here it happened very fast in an easy way. And we now see that black has a very good bishop because it's uh, on the opposite colors from all his uh, central pawns. Uh, white's bishop is also good because it's outside the pawn chain, so it, it will probably have something to do. Uh, it's, not, it's not possible to play around it, so it will probably be exchanged against a knight or a bishop. And this is uh, doesn't help anything. And all very normal moves. And this was uh, an interesting concept at the time. Black does not exchange the knight. In general, with black, you want to exchange pieces and simplify and make it sort of easy to hold a draw. But black is, is uh, getting, maybe getting a little ambitious. Also, the thing is that since the white squared bishop has gone, the square c4, this square, will be a problem for white. It will not be easy to, uh, to achieve b4, b5, which is sort of white's best plan. You also have a plan of f3, e4, but black is, is, is active and well-developed, and it will not, it's not likely to succeed without uh, the d4 pawn becoming uh, a target for uh, for black. Okay. Bishop d5, knight e4, little uh, trick. And he can take on e4, um, and maybe he should, uh, and just move the queen, uh, the queen back. Black will play knight d5, and he will try to attack on the king side with, with the f pawn. Um, but white might be able to keep his, uh, his knight close to e5, so whenever black plays f5, uh, it, it will jump back and, and sort of stop the attack in the, in the e5. Uh, this is a, is, a, is a standard way for, for white to, to stop black from, from doing too much, is to cement this knight, make it into uh, the statue on e5. And here, and here the knight is, of course, very, very strong. And here, and he should probably just take it. It doesn't matter really. He takes, takes here, here, and here we have the situation. And this position is already slightly better for black. We see that uh, the minority is attack is not going anywhere, and uh, due to the open file, um, black has so much activity that f3, e4 is not going to happen. You will always have something like knight f5 or double the rook on the e-file. So black is already clearly but slightly better. Uh, and white has no active plan. That's the problem. Because the only really good plan here would be the minority attack. But due to the, this guy here, the knight, um, well, it's not going to happen. You could just play a6 and uh, 
B4 and A4 and B5, you just take, 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 and we'll take with the knight. And as it is right now, the knight is multifunctional, while White's knight is not doing anything. The only thing he can do is sort of keep an eye on E5, and if black ever goes F5, you will just push your knight on E5 and say, okay, the worst is over. It's not gonna, it's gonna be a disaster. Anyway, um, so, so even though the position looks fine for White, good structure, uh, nice pieces, uh, he's, he's already in trouble and has very big trouble finding a plan, and it, uh, Bobosov never finds anything that resembles a plan. Of course, he's a different weight class than Petrosian, but uh, still it's, it's kind of surprising how easy it is. Oops. And h5, preventing queen g4. And uh, in general, you say, okay, this uh, weakens the king side, but here uh, black has such a, a, a big space advantage on the king side that white can never sort of counterattack uh, there. And, and basically, white has no plans. So. And of course, uh, this is something Petrosian usually did. When he could repeat moves once, he would do that just to prove to the opponent that he has no active plan. And of course, he doesn't do it again. Queen f5. And Black's plan is to slowly uh, expand on the king side, uh, starting a, a king side attack. And, um, and, and white, well, he has no plan. f6, kicking the knight again. And rook d7. Other rook comes. Oops, I keep doing that. King g1, knight e4. All the pieces are coming. And of course, we want to keep the queens and kings on, queens on, threatening knight d2, preventing that. And here comes Petrosian. And when, when Petrosian sacrificed the pawn, you should be very uh, nervous because then something bad is coming. <laughs> and this is also what happens. g5, threatening d4 and g3. And uh, we see that. This is basically the way Black would like to make the, uh, the minority attack, is to, to uh, weaken the, this guy on e3 by pushing the pawn to d3. At the same time, keeping the pawn on f6 and keeping that knight out of e5. That would sort of try to stop the attack. And he took the pawn. And uh, now we're ready for for the fun. The the H file is open. Rook e1, d4, take take. And of course, Black is uh, is almost winning here. But White should be very careful. He doesn't just lose instantly. He's trying to get his pieces out, but this is not good because of this. And uh, here, uh, Bobosov uh, resigned. Um, and that looked very easy, and it did, looked like uh, White didn't uh, put up much of a fight. But in, uh, in all truth, his uh, position was strategically very difficult when he ended up in this knight versus knight scenario. Uh, and uh, this is the little secret of today's uh, video. Um, this structure with the knights uh, are clearly but only a little bit better for black. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, and see you next time. Bye bye.